Coming up, legendary filmmaker Spike Lee joins Ben Mankiewicz to introduce a double feature that he's selected, beginning with a powerful drama from 1957 starring Andy Griffith and Patricia Neal. Next on TCM, a face in the crowd, then ace in the hole, and later, dark passage. Escape to Noir Valley tonight. Ben Mankiewicz, joined by, uh, well, one of the preeminent directors uh, of his generation, uh, Spike Lee. Uh, Spike, thanks for being here. It means a lot. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Not only is he uh, one of the preeminent directors uh, of his generation, Spike uh, is also uh, one of the preeminent Nick fans of his generation. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to the game right from here. <laughs> Spike wanted to explain. To my well. courtside seat. Um, I'm on the wood. <laughs> uh, Spike Lee has programmed a, a double feature uh, uh, tonight. Uh, is going to bring us Aaliyah Kazan's film written by Bud Schulberg, who's important to Spike as well, Facing the Crowd, which mm -hmm. will be our first movie, and then we'll move to Billy Wilder's 1951 film Ace in the Hole with Kirk Douglas. Why? these two movies what draws them together for you well these two films show the underbelly of america both these films were considered flops face well coming after oh. on the waterfront right and ace in the hole coming ace after, coming after sunset. sunset boulevard yeah 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 these films got killed but i think it's some of their finest work you teach these films together yes i'm a a tenure professor <laughs> at the best film school in the world, not USC. UCLA? Not AFI, <laughs> UCLA. I mean, France went there, but yeah, yeah. NYU, NY. graduate film school. Yeah. And I've been teaching it 30 years. The last 10 I've been tenured. And I have shown Ace in the Hole. And a face in the crowd. And a face of the crowd to my class. How do, kid, how do young kids respond to these movies? Great, the first day of class I said, there were some great films made before you were born. <laughs> <laughs> and they're in black and white. <laughs> so my job as a teacher exposes the films that you haven't seen before. And every time I show a film that they haven't seen, they love it. So we have, we show the films, we have a discussion afterwards. So uh, Facing the Crowd uh, with a screenplay by Bud Schulberg, directed by Elia Kazan, great, great movie. Bud had the crystal ball, television, how it's intertwined with politics. Yeah, I thought, man, how did Schulberg know there was going to be a, a Glenn Beck and a Bill O'Reilly? Then comes 2016, and you're like, wait, forget Glenn Beck and Bill O'Reilly. How do they know there's going to be a Donald Trump? Because at some point, you figured out this guy doesn't have to set up somebody else to be president. Why doesn't this guy just be president? You know, one thing I could see right off about a big city is a whole lot of people in trouble out there. Even though Andy Griffith hated that role, he was amazing in that film. Yeah, it's a shame that Andy Griffith didn't like it because you realize in this movie, like that guy could have had a career as, a, he didn't have to be Andy from Mayberry. He could have had a career in the movies. I mean, he was good enough to have a career in the movies. And also, you're leaving something out. I'm sure I am. Wouldn't be the first time. What is Vitajex? Vitajex, what you doing to me? It's Viagra. Right, early, right. Well, but well, I'm giving you another something where Bud, no. Vida Jacks, what you doing to me? <laughs> and that commercial for the, the animated commercial, I mean, that so, thing is bananas. So, that is insane. In a sense, it's amazing. Bud was, he, he. I'm surprised. He, he, he came out 57, Pride World of 56. Mm -hmm. Who was thinking about Viagra in 56? Well, I suspect. Millions and millions of men, but yeah, the, the yeah, idea yeah. that there would be a pill. But of course, in the movie, there's people will see they're just making it up, right? It's just a pep pill, right? But he's like, what if we pretended, right? Yeah, but it's still the no, no, thought, the thought that, that there could it, be a pill. Yeah, and they have a, a Telvis commercial, and then <laughs> I'm amazed that it got that that part of the movie that like it got past the censors. Like that's crazy. That film, that's I hope people watch this film because they were like 
way ahead of the curve. Well, I tell you what, we'll come back. We'll talk after the movie. Yeah. Let's let's watch it now. Uh, here it is uh, from 1957, directed by Alia Kazan, written by Bud Schulberg, starring Andy Griffith, Patricia Neal, Walter Matthau. This is a face in the crowd. I'm back with uh, director Spike Lee. He programmed uh, Face in the Crowd. He programmed Double Feature tonight. Coming up, uh, Billy Wilder's Ace in the Hole from uh, 1951. Talking a little bit about Vitajex and how... Vitajex, what's to do to me? Do the part. Dum, boom, dum, dum, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Anthony Francioso... Like, he's he just, a weasel. Yeah, he's a weasel, but he's good, right? I mean, mm -hmm. he's a good guy to have on your side until he sleeps with your you wife. You also put in a sweet smell of success. Oh, of like, like this, this is the same type of... That world, you know. 1957, by the way, which I think is the best year Hollywood had, arguably. Certainly best. Yeah, I was born. That's right, 1957. Uh, uh, the, the first Spike Lee joint. <laughs> <laughs> so 1957, facing the crowd. You just mentioned Sweet Smell of Success, also 57. Paths of Glory, Stanley Kubrick, 12 Angry Men. I ain't even gotten to Bridge on the River Choir, which won the Oscar, but those movies, like, I just, man, that's oh, can amazing. Can I just say something? Yeah. The whole thing of Malcolm X, I know I'm jumping, but... We wanted Malcolm X to be on the scale of David Lean's films. Oh, Top Chivago, Lawrence Arabia, and Bridge River Choir. Yeah. So one of the things that I take away from A Face in the Crowd is, so right at the end of the movie, he's had this huge meltdown. He's been humiliated on television. He's insulted his very viewers. And yet Matthau says, You're going to be back in television. Only it won't be quite the same as it was before. There'll be a reasonable cooling off period, and then somebody will say, why don't we try them again in an inexpensive format? People's memories aren't too long. Of course, he's right. There would be a comeback for a guy like that. And then where he's up in the top of the skyscraper, yelling, screaming. Yeah, she's not worried about him. He could jump, not jump. But as Walter Matthau says, he's not. He's not, he's not the jumping type. He's not going to That jump. film, I know I'm repeating myself, that film is so far ahead of... 1957. Totally. And yeah. they definitely have the crystal ball. And years later, Patty Chavsky and C. Lumet get together and they add to that. In network, yeah. So the last thing then I'm on a face in the crowd before we move on, though, the, I, I want to believe that your kids, the t kids you teach at NYU where you were a tenured professor, they respond. To oh, it. yes. They still do. Yes. yes. I tell them there's some great S.H. Made before you were born. Yeah. And that's when it's, I want to show you stuff that you have not seen. Foreign cinema, too. Yeah, of course. Right. So because, I mean, the great thing about when I was in film school, I was introduced to world cinema, stuff that I, not, I was not going to see on Channel 9 or Channel 5, you know, so, or in the theaters. Yeah. yeah, it turns out, what do you know? France, Germany, Spain, Italy, Japan, India, they, they also knew how to tell stories on yes. screen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Great, great filmmakers. Yeah. And uh, if you want to be a filmmaker, I just think that you should have a well-rounded view of filmmakers from different parts where also the great filmmakers that come from that not just come out of Hollywood. No question. All right. Well, Spike, this is great. Mm -hmm. Don't go away. Spike Lee will return uh, with another film. Uh, Billy Wilder's 1951 picture, Ace in the Hole with Kirk Douglas, is up next on TCM. Next on TCM, Ace in the Hole, then Dark Passage, and later, Yentl. TCM has a secret tonight. I'm Ben Mankiewicz, joined by uh, filmmaker Spike Lee, one of the great directors of his time. Thank you, sir. It's an honor to have you here. Glad to be here. Been looking forward to this for a long time. Thank you. Spike's program is double feature. We just had uh, from 1957, Face in the Crowd, uh, written by Bud Schulberg, uh, directed by Aaliyah Kazan. Up next, co-written by Billy Wilder, directed by Wilder, Kirk Douglas stars in Ace in the Hole. This film, like A Face in the Crowd, is so far ahead of its time. Kirk Douglas plays a reporter. He loses a job in the big city, New York, comes out, gets a job in New Mexico, barely getting by, and he comes upon a story that he gets lucky. A guy named Leo Minosa is digging in a cave. There's a burial ground. A burial ground right. inside a cave, mm -hmm. and there's a collapse, and he's trapped. Tell me, Leo, how did it happen? I guess I crawled in too far this time. 
You've got to to find a good one. Back there, it's pretty well cleaned out. But I found me a beauty. Worth 50 bucks any day. It's then a whole floor caved in under me. I guess maybe they didn't want me to have it. It's a baby stuck in a well story, right? Like, mm -hmm. we're going to get the guy out in time. And Kirk Douglas recognizes this as his opportunity. Again, Chase. To get back to New York. Get back to New York. Get back to the big time star. He making. talks about, I want to go back to Broadway, Yogi Berra, mm -hmm. the, right. the Yankees. I want to get back to the big time. Right. He's less interested in telling the truth about the story and more interested in getting. He's the first person chasing the money. Then everybody starts chasing the money because what develops then is this story goes on and on. It becomes, national story. It becomes a national story. But he's the only one that's allowed to go into the, to the mountain. And talk to this guy. And talk to this talk guy. Talk to Leo. Yeah. And it's a carnival atmosphere. They're selling corn dogs. It becomes an event. People are coming. Tourists are coming to the town just to see the story about the man trapped in the cave. And audiences in around the country were not interested in this movie. They were not feeling it. <laughs> Because Billy Wall was showing you, this is America. Yeah. And they weren't 51, they weren't buying that. It's written by Walter Newman, Lester Samuels, and Billy Wilder. Give them all credit for this really yes, great yes, screenplay. Yes. But this was, uh, to me, this is my favorite Wilder film. I, I don't know if it's his best More than Sunset Boulevard? More than Sunset Boulevard, more than Double Indemnity, more than Stalag 17. Don't get me wrong, I love Billy Wilder. I mean, one after Great, another. great, great director. Right, right. And I got the Lost. chance to meet him and have, sit and have... Talk for like two hours. He was signing all my stuff. <laughs> you brought in, so you had Billy Wilder sign stuff? Yeah. Hello, my speak to Billy Wilder. We'll, we'll connect you now. You just called the main number at Paris? Yes. They put me straight into him. He picked up the phone. He said, yes, I know who you are, Spike. I like your films. Uh, I said, you don't need to know. I said, come on over. So the great. guy would every day would come to his office. He was waiting for people yeah, to come. And just like... Working on stuff, but everybody knew he's not going to make another film. But he was coming to that office every single day. Nancy Myers and her husband, Charles Shire, they were making a movie, Baby Boom, with Diane Keaton. And they asked, essentially with you, they're like, can we collaborate with Billy Wilder? You have him under, he's here. And he loved it. He loved, he got to talk about movies, got to tell his stories. And, and, I, and, I, and here's the thing, though. Whether you're, if you're a great, great, great athlete, artist, filmmaker, you get to an age and you think, do people remember who I am? And yeah. I'm just like an old fuddy-duddy. And then when people acknowledged, like the first time I met Kazan, he was on the Upper West Side. He's living in a, a flat. I had to walk like eight flights up the building. You had to walk up? There's no, there was no elevator in the building. Kazan lived in an elevator, in a building with no elevator? Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> and Bud Schoberg, you know, connected us. And I must have stayed there for five hours, man, because they know they're not going to be around long. But they just get, you, you know, they're just the acknowledgement, like, like, I'm not forgotten. And, and the same thing with Kazan, I, I, I saw with Billy Wilder in his office on the lot. Yeah. Well, let's watch the movie. From 1951, co-written by Billy Wilder, directed by Billy Wilder, Kirk Douglas, Jan Sterling, Ace in the Hole. I'm back with uh, director Spike Lee, who programmed uh, tonight's double feature. Spike, thanks for uh, thanks well, for thank doing Thank you. This. Thanks for putting these two. Thank you for having me here because those two films. Yeah. I love them. Facing the Crowd, we opened with from 1957. We just saw Ace in the Hole from 1951, Billy Wilder's Ace in the Hole. You love that last shot. I think that's one of the greatest final shots of any movie in the history of cinema. The last 10 minutes. Kirk Douglas bleeding out. Right. Finally getting a conscience. Finally, finally doing, the right, doing the right thing, but paying the yes. price for it. And he goes back to the newspaper office. Right. That he stumbled upon. With his boss with the belt and yes. the suspenders. Yeah, he said, yeah. never trust a man who wears a belt, belt and, and suspenders. suspenders. That's right. Yeah. And then later on you see him wearing a <laughs> he sees Kurt wearing a belt suspenders. And then he's bleeding out. And then he falls dead. And the camera is right there in front of his face. They were telling some truths about America. Americans weren't ready for it. Yeah. They weren't ready for it. Yeah, well, I mean, especially in 51. Like, I mean, television's pretty new in people's homes in 51. By 57, television has become a 
a significant threat to Hollywood. Like 51, Hollywood wouldn't even react to television, wouldn't even take it seriously. But we see it. In the, in, 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 but I mean, here's Ace, the thing, though. Yeah, I mean, the TV say, crews were out there in, yeah. in, in Ace in the Hole. If I may say this, though, without the success of On the Waterfront and Sunset Boulevard, they would not have been able to make those films. Right. Nobody, no, no director without that success would have got those movies made. Uh -uh. Yeah. Not even them. Those two the biggest directors at the time in Hollywood. But they had to have the success of Sunset Boulevard on the Warfare to make these two films that are really holding up a mirror to America. And Americans did not like what they saw in that mirror. No, at that's all. right. That's right. Facing the crowd didn't do well to box office. Ace in the Hole also didn't. And again, these movies suggested things about the media and suggested things about America that Americans were not ready to hear. Not that America. Are those morons out there? I toss them a dead fish and they'll flap their flippers. The circus is over. To say these movies are still relevant today is a gigantic understatement. You can just change a couple of things and tell the same story. They had the crystal ball. Spike, thank you. This was thank great. You. Thank you. And, and thank you for watching this because these are two of my favorite films. You teach these films to yes, your class. Yes, I showed this to my class. Uh, anyway, graduate film school. And uh, we have... Very good discussions <laughs> after we show these films. Well, I'm glad you're showing it to uh, young people, getting them interested in these films. Thank after, you. They're Thank great you. films. And as I said before, the first day of class, I tell them, I'm going to show you films that were made for you were born. And they might be in black and white. <laughs> there were some great essays made before you were born. <laughs> uh, thank you for doing that. Uh, Spike Lee, everybody. Peace and love. Spike's done for the night, but the movies, of course, continue on TCM, and as always, they are uncut and commercial-free.